My name is Derek Beaulieu. I'm Calgary's 2014-2016 Poet Laureate, and I'm here to speak to you about the horror of being a novelist. In Stanley Kubrick's 1980 film adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining, author Jack Torrance slowly loses his grip on sanity while ensconced in a winter-long residency as caretaker for the seasonally closed Overlook Hotel. Over the season, Jack, a struggling novelist, uses his solitude, interrupted only by his wife Wendy and son Danny, to attempt to construct his new novel. Only a few pages of Torrance's efforts are revealed in The Shining, but every single page consists wholly and entirely of the phrase, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, repeated over and over and over again, over presumably several hundred pages. In the filmic reveal of Torrance's creative masterpiece, Wendy emotionally collapses as she finally realizes the extent of her husband's crumbling sanity. Under the mental anguish of the Sisyphean task of non-linearity, Jack Torrance's grip on reality is weakened, much as readers feel the strain of such a non-traditional manuscript. This key scene was added by Kubrick and is unique to the film version of The Shining. King's original novel contains no such reference. Torrance's cinematic text reflects the role of the author and the futility in the creation of original work. First appearing in James Howell's Proverbs in English, Italian, French, and Spanish in 1659, the proverb has a second little-known line, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All play and no work makes Jack a mere toy. Extrapolating the first line of this proverb, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, suggests that novels informed entirely from the materiality of work without the play of narrative are inherently dull, both to the reader and the author, refuting John Cage's ideas of repetition and reiteration. The second line, however, counters this position by arguing that texts that are inherently playful are in fact nothing more than playthings, mere toys. The ideal text, if constructed well, will eschew the dull and the boring alike. A text should be written in terms not of whether it could be done better, but whether it could have been done in any other way at all. While Kubrick's The Shining suggests that Torrance's insanity was the result of alcoholism and the influence of the Overlook Hotel itself, this manuscript presents an obsessive text that documents how the interplay between linearity and non-linearity sends the author and Wendy, his sole reader, into a mental tailspin. The labor of writing defines a writer's existence despite Torrance's dictum that all work and no play will denigrate a writer into a dull boy. All work consists entirely of the repetition of a single sentence without any explicit discussion of the tradition of fiction. Characterization, narrative, dialogue, conflict all disappear. All work is a documentation of process, the evidence of an obsessive writing practice which reduces writing to the act of writing. The lack of narrative, character, and dialogue makes all work about material, the accumulation of text on a page. A novel is anything that takes the form of a novel regardless of content. Ironically, Jack Torrance's All Work and No Play Makes Jack a Dull Boy is more indicative of contemporary prose and poetry than one would first expect. The gall to call oneself a writer, and especially a poet, with all the inherent cultural baggage, causes even more pause when those times when one isn't writing, when his life has other plans, when one is between projects, or during that most frightening period of writer's block. What do we do with the moments when we aren't writing? Are you a writer if you're not writing at all, when your poetic output consists of obsessive baseball tossing and the obsessive retyping of a single phrase? Can not writing be a literary act? Can we consider that an author is adding to her oeuvre by ceasing to write? 
All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, levels fictional authors with factional ones, and undermines the reality of all authors, all poets, and all artists.